Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and welcome to my channel. This morning I felt I'd come to you in an open and transparent way to deliver this message. It's something that I woke up with about four o'clock in the morning, felt inclined to share it with you and I just felt as though it needed to be said. Um, for those of you first time passing, you're welcome to subscribe, like, dislike, whatever. And for my existing subscribers, thank you always for your support. Okay, so it's the myth of the Black Brit. And I'm tired of every day receiving something that is showing black people in a bad light. Recently, we've been receiving these videos that Chinese people are using black people and it's made to make us feel as though we're the underdogs, as though we're less than. And I'm tired of that. I'm tired of our victim mentality. I'm tired of us playing the victim and not recognising the power we have within. But accepting that we are less than when we know deep down that is not the truth. That is not our truth. I'm tired of self-righteous people getting paid to tell us what we are doing wrong without acknowledging things we are doing right. I mean, every now and then you get these intellectuals going around saying, oh, black people, you know, you can't stick together. You, you, you're doing this, you're doing that. Look at the Asians, look at this, look at that. I'm fed up of it. I don't want to hear about it. Why don't you praise us for what we've done right? Instead of digging out everything that we are doing wrong. We all have a different story. We all have a different purpose. Maybe we're not meant to have businesses on every corner of the street. Maybe we're not meant to be selling hair in hair shops. Maybe we're just not. Our destiny could be different. Have you ever thought about that? I'm tired of people telling us that we're too crab in a barrel. What that means is that, you know, as one person is trying to get up, we're trying to drag them down. You know, they make it look as though it's the norm, as though it's our behaviour, when it's not. Maybe our destiny is not to build businesses, or at least not the way of the Asians. But we are being entrepreneurial in every day, from the moment we wake up and say, how am I going to provide for my family and myself? Our business cap goes on. And I'm reading this because... I don't want it to have less weight because I'm reading it. It's because I really wrote it down as I felt it this morning. And so I wanted to share it with you. But every now and then I will go and read it and I will reflect my own thoughts. Our business cap goes on and we use our imagination and ingenuity to decide what is best for us in that moment. And that's what we do. You know, a lot of times... All the odds are against us, and yet we persist. We get up every morning in this challenging society and work out how are we going to live through the next day? What are we going to do? And our creative cap goes on. And sometimes we make wrong choices. Sometimes we make wrong decisions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you are not, that you are less than. If you've done something wrong in order to survive, it doesn't mean that you are less than. It just means you are unsuccessful and that was a poor decision and you need to make a better decision next time. But that entrepreneurial hat is on 24-7. It might not be in the way of a business on the corner. It might not be in the way of owning a hair shop, but it is there. You may say, we just don't want to survive. We want to live. We want to have money and opportunities like the white person. What about those white persons, those white people who don't have opportunities? What about those white people who don't have money and who actually resent us because some of us do? What about them? Why don't you, why don't you mention them when you're talking about we don't have or what we can do better? Many of us have been struggling for years to do better and we are doing better. When you think about what the odds are against our success 
and yet we still have relative success, that is what you should be concentrating on. Not always digging and finding fault. Always finding fault in us, in black people. And I'm talking about black people, you know. I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about black people pulling black people down and not recognising their attributes. Not building them up. Not building up black people and seeing that their successes, regardless of how small. Those who tend to... Th Yo, what's that? Um, okay, I've said that bit. Um, there will be some intellectuals I know who will try and pull me down and bring some historical perspective to it and, you know, have some posh names or whatever they want to do. I'm not really, that's not going to phase me at all. Because you do have intellectuals who are out there, they think they're our, they're our parents and they think they can tell us what to do and how to do it and what we're doing wrong and that is not they're not helping you didn't go to university to put us down at least i hope that's not what you did yes you found a lot about our history yes you've learned a lot about what our ancestors went through but that doesn't mean now that you jump up and try to put us down and chastise us for not being better than what we are when you know we don't have a level playing field. So we need to look for the good in each other. Look at what we have achieved. If we've achieved it and lost it, we don't need to beat ourselves up. We can look for ways to rebuild, and we usually do. We are usually successful at everything we put our minds to, and that's one thing with black people. I'm not saying it's not true for everyone, because as they say, as you shall achieve, you sh as you shall believe, you shall achieve. But with black people in particular, if they put their mind to something, they're going to do it and they're going to succeed at it. It's only that their minds are so distracted and lethargic at the moment, they're not putting their minds to anything. And that is why, and that is why they are where they are. And you have to ask yourself, why have their minds been dulled? Why don't they have that energy? Why don't they have that, um, that enthusiasm to put their minds to something and succeed? It's because they're always, by black people themselves, being put down all the time. Made, you know, they, they never get a pat on the back. If anybody gives them a pat on the back, it's usually white people. I mean, the amount of people that pat me on the back. I'm not saying that black people don't pat me on the back. They do. But, you know, if I go to work, sometimes, you know, the little things that I don't even recognise in myself, they recognise and they acknowledge it. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that. So all I'm saying is that, and this isn't a generalisation, all I'm saying is that we need to do better for ourselves with ourselves. So, black people have been instrumental in all aspects of history, not just slavery, but as kings and queens, as scientists, as technicians, as artists, as lawyers, as teachers, as ministers. And as we've seen more recently in the health service, saving lives. And we're leaders. We always were. But our leading spirit is, is lying dormant for some reason. Black people built pyramids. They built dreams on hopes and prayers. Black people rallied together and created the carnival. So what if it was taken over? People say, oh, you know, we build a carnival and look all the white people in Pandora and it's not how we had it. It doesn't matter. You were there at the beginning. People, black people in Britain were there at the beginning of the carnival. They created it. So you created it and somebody else takes it. Same old story. Black people have been creating and people have been taking for years. Bear in mind that you were the originator. You were the creator of that product. And so they run off with it. There's nothing you can do about that. They usually have the wherewithal and the resources to build it up and remarket it that you don't have. But that doesn't mean you should feel less than. It means that you were the creator of that product and you should feel proud of yourself. 
as should our ancestors who left, who went before and never got any credit for the work that they had done, where many of them didn't get any credit. We also rallied around and say to save Black Brent Park complex in Stonebridge, and we won. Remember that? Remember they were going to take it away from us. That big complex, even though our names was on the lease, and because the, we all got together, we would manage to save it. That's an achievement. That's an accomplishment. That's gone. You know that people forget. That's when black people are pulling together. And they can. So stop keep saying, oh, black people, they don't know how to stick together. They don't know how to pull together. What about in the entertainment industry? We're always pulling together. We're always supporting um, the people, in the producers. If, if, if there's a dance, don't minimise the fact that it's a dance, you know. But we, we have supported people with the dances, whether it's £20, £50, whether they put on their dinner and dances, whatever it is. And the thing is, is that it's where there is a need, that is what people need to look for. When Asians put up a corner shop, it's because there's a need for it. When Asians are selling hair and goodness knows what else, it's because there's a need for it. So people are going to go and buy where there is a need. And if black people aren't in a position to provide that need, you don't knock them for it. They can do other things. And there are other things that they do. So what else? Black people have pulled together for the Windrush, you know, trying to get people who were entitled to be paid, who were badly treated, who was mistreated, who some of them who died, some of them were wrongly deported. You've got black people rallying together to make sure that people are treated fairly. And that is still going on. Those are the things you need to look at when you're talking about black people in Britain as not pulling together and either being lazy or criminally minded and all of them in jail. Pure negative. There are positives. Whatever a black person puts his or her mind to, they achieve it. And this is the way... And this is the war that is on to change the direction of the black man's mind. So it isn't focused on building themselves up, but this pulling each other down. And that's what sometimes happens. Indirectly, subliminally, you know, we, we tend to um, look at people and think, oh, you know, they've got this or they shouldn't have that. And it's always about that. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? What is making you think that way? What is it that is changing your mindset from one of love and generosity and charity to one that is resentful and bitter and angry? What is it? You know, when they say red eye, red eye is not a good thing, you know. It's not a good thing. Stop comparing yourself to others because as long as you compare yourself to others, you're never going to be satisfied with who you are or what you've got and what you have achieved. And relative to others, there's always going to be somebody who you are better than. That doesn't mean you become arrogant and big headed and pig headed. It just means that you have something that is a, 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 a ruler or a I can't think of the word, but something to compare yourself to in the sense that to make yourself feel better. There's always someone or something that you're going to be good at and better at than somebody else, because that's how we're built. We're all built unique. We're all built to be able to be better at something. And that is why each of us should find out what we're good at. And whatever it is you're good at, that's what you're, you're, you will excel at. But a lot of people, they listen to people, especially if you're in some of these relationships where people are always putting you down. Your husband is putting you down. Your wife is putting you down. Your partner is putting you down, saying you're not good at this. You're not good at that. You're not a good father. You're not a good mother. You know, you're useless. You're whatless. You can't do this. You can't do that. Never looking at what individuals have done. 
and some people feel threatened and that's why they pull people down. Oh, you think you're intelligent, you, you, you think you're this, you think you're that. You know, afraid of pe allowing people to be themselves threatens when people are themselves. Because when you become your true self, you're very powerful and you're very threatening. But that's not something to be afraid of. That is something to admire and respect. When people are themselves, you should be looking at them in awe and aspiring to be yourself, whoever yourself is. So like I said, I woke up with this message this morning to tell you not to listen to the negative traits people are saying about you. Not to listen to the academics who feel that they have the right to parent you and denounce you and demonise you. Many of us grew up believing that those who were educated were better than us. They are not better, they are different. And they have different opportunities and different ambitions. That does not mean that you are less. It just means you are different. Don't let them tell you what's wrong with you if they're unable to balance what is right with you. Maybe for the majority of black people, our vision is not business. Maybe it's not about making tons of money, but, but just making ourselves comfortable. We should not be made to feel guilty just because we want to live a comfortable life. Black people have been accused of being, of having short-term gratification, while white people are meant to have long-term, um, be long-term strategics. And that's always been by sociologists, and that's always, always been seen as a negative, the fact that we only live for the now. You know, when we have our money, we can't see of it. We can't, you know, we can't achieve anything. This is this is the perception. This is how they've labelled us. As though when we have money, we can't save, we can't do this, we can't do that. Everything we want, we want it now. We want big car, big house, and then we've got nothing, you know, long term. But when you think about it, even if you have a big house, providing you've managed your money properly, that's a long term goal. A lot of black people own houses. Or have bought houses. You don't own it until the mortgage is paid off. But a lot of people have houses. And even then, the Queen owns the land. So worst case scenario, they can still take the house even if you don't have a mortgage. But my point, you get my point. People that have houses, and that is a long-term commitment. People stay in jobs for years and years. Black people stay in jobs for years and years. That is a long-term commitment. People, Black people stay in relationship for years and years. That is a long-term commitment. So I don't know where they're going by saying that we seek short-term gratification. It's, it's a message they want us to believe to make us spend our money and lose it into, the, into society or in, pay it back all the time. We're always whatever little we have, we give it back because they keep telling us, oh, you know, black people, they, 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 you know, they are into short term gratification. They live for the now. And then we'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, we live for the now. Um, for tomorrow we die. Live for today. Tomorrow we die. So, yeah, I'm going to make sure I spend my money now. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. Falling into the trap. But is it a trap? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Is it wrong to have that kind of mentality? What is right? What is wrong? all depends what your goal is and everybody has a different goal it doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong it just means it's different and plus they're talking about white people are strategic you still have white people who don't have anything who don't have who don't own their home or who haven't bought their home who haven't been able to hold a job down who haven't been able to hold a relationship down so there's equality across the board but for some reason, you have some black people who pick on black people and make it a generalised statement that black people can't do anything. Like black people can't stick together. Black people don't know how to run businesses. Black people don't do this. Black people don't do that. Black I mean, it's, it's tiring. And it's not conducive to making anybody any better. It's like if you tell a child from the time it's born to the time it grows up, it's whatless, it's useless. You know, it's not going to amount to anything. 
unless that child is rebellious, that child will become what those people have said that person will become. If you tell a black person long enough that they're inferior, that they're no good, that they're not good at this and that they have a slave mentality or they have a victim mentality or, you know, they can't have business, they don't know how to run business, they don't know how to manage money. What do you think is going to happen if they hear that time and time again? Yes, you have the rebellious ones who prove a point, but that's a minority. The majority believe it and they say, what is the point? Why am I going to bother when I can't do this or these opportunities aren't there? And I Blah, 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 blah. Woe is me. You have to know what your reality is. Your reality isn't what people are telling you it is. Your reality is within yourself. Oh, I'm babbling on here. Um, let me see. Yes, money can make your life smooth. It can eliminate financial worries, but with it comes other responsibilities. And maybe some people are better off without them. We are daily being fed lies about ourselves so that we deny the power within ourselves. And it's all deliberate. I say to you, don't underestimate your power. Don't underestimate your unique abilities. Don't underestimate your strength of mind. Remember the words of our grandparents. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do. It's about what you want to put your mind to. Do you want to put it to good or do you want to put it to evil? What is your definition of good and what is your definition of evil? Whose, de whose definition are you following? Are you following the um, society's definition of good and evil? Because it might be very different from what your definition is. Like I said, um, let me see, black people have common sense. Many are street smart. Most of them are survivors. If we are overpowered, there is nothing we can do about that. But if we have unity of mind and spirit, that is essential. Forget about the physical unity because that can be distracting. Because when people are saying, oh, black people don't stick together, black people are this and that, it's about having unity of mind and spirit. If you have a unified mind and spirit about your goals and your achievements and your ambitions and what you want for yourself as a black person, you can achieve it. But instead, it's scattered. And why do you think that is? So, black people's history is different. We need to stop comparing it to others, in particular to Asians. Black people need to study the Bible and work out who were the victors and who were the defeated. And study the characteristics of the victors and assume and acquire those characteristics. Instead of acquiring the traits of the underdogs and the defeated. Black people seem to envy successful Asians in business. Not all of them, of course. But do you know the rate of domestic violence in some of these Asian homes and honour-based violence in some of these Asian homes? Every society, every culture, every race has their challenges. Every race has their burden to bear. So don't go envying and saying, oh, look at the Asians, look how them have their business. You shouldn't shop there and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. You know? Anybody who has put their mind to something and has achieved it, don't envy them for it. Don't envy. They're fulfilling a need just like everybody fulfills a need. And that is why people are successful. If you find a loophole, if you find a need, a gap in the market, and you can satisfy it, that is on you. That is your success. But OK, Asians have these shops on every corner. When you want to go and buy something, you run and go and buy it from them. And if black people were so inclined, if that was their bag, it just happens not to be their bag. They would be they would have a shop on every corner, too. But you don't keep knocking down people and then say, don't buy from them and don't do this and don't do that. 
OK, so the Chinese are violating black people. Why do you think that is? Because those black people have been made to feel inferior. They have made, been made to feel less than. Chinese people can't have the power over them if they had been made to feel empowered from the beginning, if they knew their power inside. They couldn't be treating them like that. And the same way like you now, you can only be treated how you allow yourselves to be treated. But what happens is you get treated a certain way and you start blaming everybody else. A lot of us, we're instrumental in our own demise. We're instrumental in our own failings, as well as we're instrumental in our own success. But for some reason, we have to point fingers to justify why we are not where we are. When everybody can have, can fill a gap in the market. Everybody can do that, regardless of how small it is. Sometimes the playing field does not seem level, and nor is it meant to be. Sometimes it's about finding that part of the playing field that is level. And working with that. What do you think as a black person for your purposes? Do you think it is being like everyone else? Do you think it's about having a top job, lots of money, big house, big car? Or is your purpose as a black person much deeper than that? I'm sure your purpose is not about comparing yourself to other people and other races and other customs, although each one teaches one and we can all learn from each other. But maybe it's about emulating the same style of entrepreneurship, but look to see what's congruent, what is within what they're doing that is aligned with your beliefs, your values, your talents, your competencies. You might not be meant to be doing what they're doing. It might not be a corner shop. It might be something totally different, but it's aligned with who you are as an, individ as an individual. And that doesn't mean you knock them and they should knock you. It just means you have different goals and you have different ambitions and you want to do something different. Many of us need to dig deep to find out what is special about us that makes others hell-bent on making us feel dissatisfied with ourselves. What is it about us that we mustn't find out? Why are we constantly distracted from finding out our true selves? Sometimes it's through manipulation. Sometimes it's through media. Sometimes it's through vanity and superficial stuff. Why are we berated and made to feel less than? What are they afraid of? What are they afraid we'll find out? What is it within us that we don't know about? Seek within. You'll find the answers. It was there all the time. The answer to your greatness and your power. So, peeps, I just felt I had to give you that message today. I hope... Um, it resonates with some of you. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.